Hey guys, Pogo here, and welcome to episode 4 of Fightcraft. In this episode, we are going to work on the countdown mechanism for each game. The idea is that once enough players join the game, or if the game is force started, then a countdown will begin for however many seconds, and when the countdown is finished, the game state will change from countdown to active, and the game will begin. We're going to be writing the class that takes care of running the countdown, and then we also have to write a couple of methods here to, um, you know, help us out. So, uh, the first thing that we're going to do uh, is we're going to look in the map class, and again, we want to trigger the countdown once enough players join the game. So you can see here uh, that in map we have this array list of spawn locations. That's all of the possible locations uh, where a player could spawn. And then right here, we have a list of uh, all of the players in the game. So what we can do is we can compare the number of players that are here right now to the number of spaces available. And you know, once there's once all the spaces are filled up, then we will have the countdown begin. So we're going to write a couple of uh, methods here. But before we do, I want to change this. I should have done this before. Uh, instead of using player, we're going to be using the game player class which obviously makes more sense because we wrote the game player class and that was kind of the purpose was to be used with this game. So we're going to be using the game player class instead. And in this case, we're going to take a game player as a parameter and good. So as you know, uh, whenever a player joins the server, uh, the game player class is instantiated for them. And whenever they uh, leave the instance is uh, destroyed. So that will be taken care of uh, a little bit down the road, but just remember that game player uh, contains an instance of player and then also some other information. Now we're going to write a couple of methods. We're going to write add player that takes a game player, game player p, and a remove player. Now there's a bunch of different things that are going to happen in these methods. Um, that we're not going to do all of it today, but for example, when we add a player, we want to save their state. So basically, whatever inventory they have, because we want to clear the inventory when they enter the game, um, whatever location they were at, because we're going to clear the location, perhaps even whatever potion effects they had, because we're going to get rid of all of those. So anything that we're modifying, and again, health and hunger would also count, anything that we're modifying as soon as they join the game, will need to be saved, and that will take place in the game player class, obviously, uh, because that's our wrapper for the player. It'll store the last location, and then in remove player, or last location and everything, we're going to uh, revert the state, or load the state, or whatever. So we'll take the location in the inventory, and we'll give it back to the player, and then we'll just destroy it from the game player class so that it's not there anymore. So that's, uh, you know, one thing. So we need to save the state, and then we need to modify the state of the player. So we need to remove their uh, inventory and their health and everything. And we'll do all of this state-related stuff in a different episode. But the important thing uh, that we're going to do today, I guess we can just write this one really quickly. We can just say players.removeP. Uh, and then here, it's going to be players.addP. So we added the game player to our list. And now we want to see if we should start it. So we should say if players.size is greater than or equal to uh, map dot, and I guess we just need to write a little method. Um, we'll just write public int get spawn count return spawn locations dot size, or we'll call it get spawn location count, I suppose. So map dot get spawn location count. So if the number of players is greater than or equal to the number of spawn locations, and this is really important, and game state is, uh, well, I guess we need to add one uh, right here. We need to add uh, waiting, countdown, and active. And, uh, not game state, and state is equal to game state dot waiting. The important reason why we're doing this is because, and this should also say waiting right here. The reason why we're doing this is because, so when the game starts, everyone will be waiting. And once this happens, we're going to set the state equal to countdown, 
But if a player joins again, we don't want to, you know, spawn another countdown. We don't want two different countdowns because that would mess things up. And then also when the game is active and another player joins, we don't want it to start randomly counting down in the middle of the game. So we're saying if we're supposed to count down and if we're still in the waiting state, then we're going to take care of everything. So we're going to set it to countdown and then we're going to start the countdown. So that's what we're going to do. So let's go ahead and write the class. We're going to just write a separate class just because it is a little bit of writing in here uh, that will take care of the countdown. So we'll call it uh, countdown. Cool. Okay, so we're going to write this countdown class right here. And this, of course, will be in charge of doing a countdown. And the reason why we want to have a class, well, there's going to be a couple of different things in here, but first we need it to extend uh, bucket runnable. A bucket runnable is, you know, like a runnable, but it has some bucket related things relating to how they handle different events. And I don't think the decompiler is attached right now. Uh, but the important thing is that there's a bunch of methods in here. If you look at it, like this cancel method, that's very important. That'll let us stop the countdown when we want it to. Um, and then there's also some other important things here, like get task ID and run task that will actually cause it to happen. So it functions similarly to a uh, runnable, but it's a little bit different. So we're going to add the unimplemented method run. And bucket runnable does actually uh, implement runnable, but it just has extra stuff in it. So the run method is what will happen when the countdown is started. But we do need a constructor in here, because there's a couple pieces of information we need. We need the game. Which game uh, are we counting down? Because we're going to have to go into the game and change the state of the game uh, when it's finished. So we need to take instance, we need to keep uh, count of that. The other thing that we need is i. i is going to be the counter. It's going to start up at 60 if it's 1 minute or 30 if it's 30 seconds, and it's going to be counting down. This run method, uh, we're going to do, uh, we're going to call it so that it will run, this method will be called every second, so we're going to use i to keep track of how many seconds it's been. So this run will be in charge of dealing with just one second in time, and it will automatically be called every second once we get that set up. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's what we need there. So let's go ahead and make a constructor. And it is, of course, going to take the game. And, you know, it's up to you if you want to take i in the constructor. Um, you know, you could, I guess, configure that games have different start times, but, or different countdown times, but I don't know how useful that is. So we'll just set the game, uh, and then we'll do the, the starting uh, let's just, we'll start it at 30 seconds, so we'll say this.i equals 30. So, um, you know, it'll be 30 seconds, and it'll count down from 30 to 0. Okay, so that's uh, all we need to do there. And now the run method, again, this will be called one time per second, and it'll be in charge of dealing with that second. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to say that if i is 0, uh, so if i is 0, then, then we're done. So we want to cancel the timer first of all, so that this won't be called anymore because we're done with it, clearly. Then we want to broadcast a message. So we can say game.broadcast, and we'll say in gold, uh, we'll say fight, or, you know, change it, or we can make it customizable, uh, configurable, rather, whatever we want to do. But in this case, it'll just say fight. So, you know, go. Um, and then the other important thing that we want to do is we'll call game.start. And I guess we'll just write a method. I don't know where to put it. I guess we'll put it down here. So start and, well, I guess start. So, so the broadcast thing should, should be in here. The idea is that the start method will be in charge of starting the game and it'll either be called from the uh, countdown or it will be called from a command. So if I have a force start command. So start will just broadcast the fight message and then it'll say, uh, or I guess we'll just put that first, not that it matters, is we'll say state or this.state equals uh, game state dot active. So we're saying that now we are fighting. And let's go back to countdown. So if i is 0, we want to cancel, and then we want to call game.start. So we want to make the game start. 
So otherwise, uh, here you can go ahead and let's say that we want to broadcast it. So we'll say that if uh, i is equal to 30 seconds or i is 15 or i is um, 5. So these are basically the times we want it to announce. So we want to say there are 30 seconds and then a warning at 15 uh, and then a warning at 10 and then a warning at 5. Four, uh, three, two, and then one. Now you could, I guess, keep an array of all of the counting times, but again, that would slow it down. So we're just saying that if i is 30 or 15 or 10 or 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, then we want to actually broadcast a message. We want to say game.broadcast. Oops. Uh, we'll say game.broadcast, and we'll say, so we'll say in, whoops. In gold, we'll say um, i seconds. Uh, we'll say uh, just you know some sort of message. We can say uh, the fight will begin in i seconds. So the fight will begin in 30 seconds, 15, 10, whatever. So this is in charge of just broadcasting the information. And then finally, we need to do i minus minus. So, you know, at first it'll be 30, it'll broadcast the fight will begin in 30 seconds, and then it'll be 29. And it'll go and eventually it'll be 1, it'll broadcast 1 second, it'll decrement to be 0, and then once it gets to 0, it's going to cancel the countdown so that it won't run anymore, and then it's going to start the game. Uh, so now let's go over to the game class, and we need to actually start the countdown, and then we should be good. So what we'll do right here is we're going to say bucket.getServer. Dot, uh, get scheduler dot sched whoops dot and we're gonna do schedule sync repeating task so first we need an instance of the plugin um, and I guess we can just do bucket dot get server dot get plugin well this is getting kind of long dot get plugin uh, fightcraft so we're registering it to our plugin uh, and then the different arguments. So here we go. Okay, so the first argument should be the uh, the runnable that we want to use. So that'll be a new countdown. And the countdown requires that we give it the game. So we're going to do it this because we're inside of the game class. The other two parameters are, I believe, the delay and the uh, repeat. So the delay is going to be 0 and the repeat is going to be 20 and I believe that should work. Okay, and we'll fix that in one second. So the that should be 0 and 20. That means that it will uh, have no delay before it starts and then it'll repeat every 20 ticks and 20 ticks is equal to one second. Now I'm wondering why this is saying that it's um, uh, why it's giving me that line. So we want a repeating task. Oh, I see. It's because bucket runnable is uh, is deprecated. Okay. Okay. So um, in that case, we'll go ahead and leave this as it is for now, um, because getting around it is a little bit of a pain. You'd have to store the you know, store the ID of the runnable and everything. So that'll be just a minor fix that we'll get to eventually. But the important thing is that this should work at this point. So that is all for this video. We set up the countdown so that when enough players join the game, then uh, we'll go into countdown state. We'll have our countdown for 30 seconds, and then the game will begin, and we'll go into active state, and it'll broadcast a message. So now we have this game class in pretty good shape uh, to the point that we could probably move on and uh, work on. I think we need to do managers for game and map that will actually, you know, map will load in all the maps from the configuration file and then game will, excuse me, game will uh, keep track of all of the games that are currently active and eventually we'll move into commands and uh, lots of other things. But this game is definitely starting to take shape and that's pretty cool. So as always, subscribe if you want to see more, comment with what you want to learn. If you like this video, click the like button, and I will see you guys soon with some more coding. Bye for now.